Hello, welcome to Bad Pad, where now you're kind of me, try speed, and game content. I just wanted to hop on here real quick this evening, just got home, to talk about the new GFE, which is Reesh, spelled like R-E-E-C-H, like Reese's... Well, not Reese's, no, there's no S, S in it, but like Reese's Cubs versus R-I-I-C-H-E, which is how I was spelling it from the JP predicted spelling. This is Reesh, um, and she's a new Goth exclusive that will be available starting this Saturday because in other news, there is a Godfest this Saturday. Don't roll in it. Two weeks, there should be a super Godfest, and you'll have an even better chance of getting Reesh and a chance to get stuff like Illumina, um, Ideal, um, a bunch of other seven star collabs, freaking um, Valentine's Nays in there. So don't roll this Godfest. Unless you're dying. You probably aren't dying though. You can wait another two weeks, which is the estimated time that we might get Super Godfest. Let's talk about Reach though. It doesn't really say much about her in this post. So let's hop over to Pad Guide. Um, two things really quick first. First, it looks like you guys seem to be enjoying the Discord. Let me actually hop over onto the Discord right now and see what's going on on the Discord. You guys are on here. Shout outs to whoever is <laughs> currently in the general chat. This is oh it's not really 941. This someone posted it's some of people are posting ranking dungeon stuff. Nice little scroll here through the peoples. So it looks like you guys have hopped on. I think currently there are 39 of you online and 57 of you offline so I think the link sh will be, not I think, the link will be in the description of this video if you want to join the server. But um, let me know also if you think there's anything I should improve because I don't really know what people want to use in Discord. I don't use it that much personally. Um, I don't like haunt Discord that much looking you know, on different people's, different, different Discord servers. I only hop onto Discord when I need something usually. Like when it's a pad dragging dungeon and I'm scared that I'm not going to make the cutoff. <laughs> like the Reaper tournament. Let's talk about Reach though. Oh, sorry, second thing is that there is, um, last thing on Facebook here, a one-shot special challenge tomorrow, and you do want to do this one because it's for Keela. The one-shot gives you the Keela Descended Dungeon, and Keela is the evolution material for New Mir, um, of Mui's evolution, which I should probably talk about. I'll, pro I'll talk for I'll talk about Reach, so. Um, they haven't announced the New Mir yet on anything in official uh, Puzzle Dragons, but you do want to get her because she is the evolution material for her. Um, and it's how it runs from Friday 7.26 p.m. to 9 p.m. UTC 8 time, so if you're PST, it's 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. like all the other ones. Um, cool. So let's... It's probably going to be also a um, Zeus Dragon at the end. Let's hop over to Pad Guide, which is pretty dead, but um, the the stuff that they have in here is still accurate. The stuff they put in before died is still accurate. So this is Reesh. Um, this is, she has two forms. She is a seven star Godfest exclusive, so very difficult to roll, even harder to roll than six stars. Um, the only other seven star we have is Zella, who is your sister. They're both called like Witches of Loneliness or something, like Witches, witches of Solitary something, Witch of Lonely something. They're all just witches and they're all like, they need some company. Um, but this is her first form. This is the form that we don't care about very much, but I'm going to go over her awakenings anyways and, use, and her leader skill. Her awakenings are three TPAs in this form, unbindable, double skill charge with rainbow, and a skill boost and a SBR. So pretty standard, a TPA, unbindable, monster. The active skill is the same between both forms. It is a rainbow board change and it also null nullifies damage absorbed and attribute absorbed. So it's a Fujin style active and a Wedding Persephone style active in one, so you you'll never need both at the same time, at least so far. Like that would be an insane dungeon if you needed both of those effects at on one floor. Um, basically, if there is like a sop, it's like it's basically you can be sopped at with his active and you can be no dragon with his active. That's probably the best way to think of it. Uh, there's no monster yet that has both the sopped at mechanic and the no dragon mechanic. I uh, hope that never happens. <laughs> uh, RNGs is forbid. Um, and it also makes a rainbow board change, which hints that she's a rainbow type leader, and she is. 
The leader skill of this TPA based one is a little bit weak. It's a 144x with a damage reduction, and you do. That's it, actually, nothing else. So, this is by far the weaker form because it's only 144 and a shield, which isn't bad. But the other form, which is this one, the type, by the way, of this one is Devil Balance, the other one is. Devil Healer. So, I guess maybe you can use this one on a Kushnana team, but if you have this, you should not be running Kushnana. Ooh, she's so pretty. I think she's animated too, but I don't know what the animation is. It's like an Aurora behind her. So this form has double 7 combo, which is much better than triple TPA and a time extend, which is also nice. Um, actor skill again is the same. Leader skill is stronger. So you get 16x, so you get times 256, which is almost like almost double of the other one. Um, attack multiplier wise, the same damage reduction. And the other one, I didn't even talk about it, but I should probably say the other one. Sorry, hopping back here. Leader skill is rainbow, three rainbow three colors, and you have to have a blob style of water, which is annoying. This one is purely rainbow based, so it's four colors. Um, the other one, I think it said it could include hearts. This one cannot include hearts, so you have to have like, like red, blue, green, light, um, or something. You cannot use heart as one of your four colors, but the other five colors, sure. Any of those four. Um, so you get the same shield, a higher attack multiplier, it's purely rainbow based, which I think is easier in general than having the rainbow and the water. Um, well, four waters isn't that hard to come by, but the multiplier on this one is higher, and you get a time extend by two seconds. So this one is infinitely better as leader, and she has double sevens. So she has like the plus two seconds, higher multiplier, double sevens. Makes more sense. And a rainbow board change is more likely to make is 100% her board board change is 100% guaranteed to either activate here, whereas in the other form it you might just end up with three waters and be screwed. Um, so this one's infinitely better. So overall, Reach is a really good leader. Um, as a sub, she's okay. She has pretty good weighted stats too at 1,100 weighted stats. A lot of them in here. That's pretty balanced. Her recovery is not amazing. Um, yeah, 807 recovery is not the best. Pretty high attack, almost 3000. The HP is fine. It's like they're all like pretty good stats because she's balanced. Um, so she's as a sub, double sevens, great. Um, uh, you might find slightly better double sevens elsewhere. I think she's the first double seven. No, it's not true. That's a lie. D Cali has double seven rainbow. Um, but she wouldn't be bad as a sub if that was your only option. Um, her skill, I want to say by the way, her active skill is a 30 turn max skilled cooldown, which is a lot. But she does have two skill charges. I believe she is the first monster in North America to have two skill charges on one monster. So if you match Rainbow on a given turn, in addition to your one turn of normal skill boost, you will have two extra in the skill boost. So assuming you match Rainbow every single turn, the effective, which is an, a flawed assumption, the effective... Um, cooldown of this skill is 10 turns and that's a lot that's a lot of value for 10 turns a rainbow board change which is seven turns based with the kali plus fujin style and a color absorb active a fujin style active alone at is 18 turns with lu so that's some perspective for you active skill wise as a leader you're probably going to mostly want to use her as a leader not that she's bad as a sub but as a leader she's phenomenal she can pair with joyra if you want to you can pair with diablos you can pair with whatever you want to well you can pair with seven by six you can pair with another reach you could even pair with a leo when that comes out you could pair with yuki um from yuki makoto from uh persona you could do a lot of things yuki might be a good one because he gets recovery not that she needs that much recovery if you have a team with a few water type healers I, it doesn't even have to be water, but like you want to run a rainbow team with her so she can ac activate her colors for her leader skill and get the skill charge. Good subs for Reach might include. Um, doesn't have to be water based, and maybe it's a lot easier if you don't force the water at sub attribute or water attribute somewhere. Um, Amatsu is fine. Um, Amatsu is active, might make it so you cannot activate hers, the four color part. But um, damage-wise, he's fine. Ideal would work great here. Um, not that ideal, light ideal works quite well everywhere. Um, Alamiya Ren from Persona would work well. Uh, who else? Yuki Makoto would work well as a sub. He would give you the light attribute and double seven and a rainbow board change. Um, Ragnarok Dragon would be fine too. 
for the color coverage, the green dark color coverage, and also for the copious killers. Um, a lot of things will work well here because she has no color limitation except you have to cover, you should cover them all. But there's no requirement, like you have to be this attribute. But she has a lot of, you can use like a lot of different subs, which is great. And you probably want to go double 7C base, like Tachibana and Nohim would work really well. You can guarantee, those, both of them guarantee activation for her because she only needs four colors. Oh, I guess what's the best ones? Yeah, Tachibata no Hime, Ideal, Light Ideal, Grand Amamiya, Yuki Makoto would work well. Amatsu a little less. Ag ag uh, Awakenings wise, he's amazing, but his active might remove colors. Same with Khan. I think the Khans might remove colors too. So I think all the Khans convert a color into something and another color into heart, so you end up with three colors and a heart. Three colors plus heart board, but that will not work for me. So all the Amatsu is just about as good as Khan, the Khans for her. Um, active skill wise. So a lot of things work with her. Um, she should be a great leader and I would love to roll her in Super God Fist. Again, do not roll in the God Fist coming up tomorrow. Um, let's lastly talk about Mir and I guess Kila. I wonder if I can find if they have the new Mir in here. Let's talk about Kila really quick if I can find her. Just so we can see if she's good. I'm pretty sure she's bad as a sub. This is the farmable you get from the one shot that is happening tomorrow. This is Keela. Um, she's really pretty. I like the, the aura-iness of her. Um, Awakening's not good. Uh, leader skill, strong. But you, she's like the... She's a 7 by 6 leader with a very high uh, multiplier at 18x. Um... But you can, you have to do, it's like a match, what do you call it? You gotta match, you cannot match three or less orbs, you have to match four now, so you can only make TPAs or higher than that. So a difficult leader to use, also no recovery, no shield. I'm, she might be fun to use challenge wise, but I would not recommend her for normal gameplay. Uh, moving on, especially because she has like no stats and awakenings. Actually, her stats aren't terrible, but her awakenings are really bad. Let's take a look at the new mirror, huh? Because this this new mirror is actually tiered. She's in the A tier in Japan, kind of around where Narukami Yu is right now. So she's been brought back into goodness. Uh, the first, by the way, I gotta say the the follow attack one of the one of the L's and the TPA are all super awakenings. So ignore like count the first nine awakenings. And that's what she normally has, and she can super awaken with a TPA, an L awakening, or a follow-up attack. One of them. You cannot have all three. This is a new mirror. She's animated. She'll teleport around the thing if you haven't seen it. She'll be like... And it seems like she's getting younger. Like, I think her... I think this form of her is the pretty form, TDH. I wish she looked like this in her evolved form. But she gets younger and younger. She actually became a child now, so can she still be a waifu? You decide. <laughs> um... Most of the things about here are the same. Well, that's not true. She should have a very... Her playstyle wise as a leader, which is how people use her, it'll be essentially the exact same. Um, it's a heart cross style leader and you want to make a mono light team. Um, Awakenings wise, I think she traded in like an orb enhance and a couple other things for L's and 7 combos. I can't... I should know this. I never... Well, let's see. This is what she was before. Yeah, three a row and three light orb enhances. Trade those in for um, L unlocks, which don't know if that's a side grade. The orb enhance might be better for her. Um, then again, her personal damage might be high if you get a TPA and an L, or seven combos as an L, or a TPA and seven combos. Getting seven combos with a cross leader, it might be a little bit hard for some people, myself included. Um, but she has more, I suppose. I think the L's are kind of a side grade from the Orb Enhanced. I, I think Orb Enhanced has its place. Um, but... Those are her new Awakenings. She should be doing, personally, more damage overall, though, compared to her last form. With these Awakenings. Um, uh, Super Awakening-wise, I would probably go for the TPA. Just because I happen to... I think I... If I made her... I would probably go Orb Enhanced and TPA. Based, and I think that's what I say if when I make her I'll probably make her and give her a try on video for some demo slash test purposes I will be making her probably her team probably orbit hands and TPA based with Paimons and Kana probably and light cotton something like that 
or maybe one Paimon, or maybe two Paimons, and um, Kanaik might switch out maybe with Narukami Yu or Yusuke, not Yusuke, it might be Narukami Yu, something with a pixel if I need. I think since she lost her row, I'm not going to go row based. You could go row based with Mir, but looks like TPA based is more cost effective orb wise. And but I could you you could use Tifa on this team too. Tifa is perfectly fine, except Tifa erases hearts with their active, so you might want to inherit something over top of her. Um, Mir is nice. Mono Mono Light leaders are are pretty nice in general, just because there's a lot of orb changes that benefit them, like. Um, team wise, actually, let's talk about her leader skill first. Let's talk about her team options. Um, she's a dragon machine god. Cool. Her active skill is the same. It's the um, changes the world style, like pause time and move orbs freely for seven seconds, not ten. And she makes seven light orbs, so she guarantees her own activation. Usually, if you're unaware, I'll, and I'll do this in the demo, when you have a changed world style active, if you pick up an orb and don't move it until the time runs out that you can match normally again, which you probably should do because her base movement time is much longer with a pair of her than what this 7 second change the orbit or She's already guaranteed 9 seconds with a pair leader of her overall. Not 9 seconds just by herself, but 9 seconds with the, you know, the base 5 second move time that we all get. Leader skill, um, the things that changed mostly, one, her attack multiplier increased a lot. She has a passive Multiply for attack, which I'm not sure if she had before. I think she was just like 7x for any attribute and 50% reduced damage with the heals. I think it was 7.7 .7 actually. So I'm pretty sure she before she just had a shield and attack multiplier and it ended up being like 7.7 .7 for um, just one of her. Now she also gets if you are light attribute. Um, and I might be wrong about the if you light attribute or not having that before, but now she does get 2x attack and recovery for being light attributes. So actually, you know, I need to look it up. Let's see. Yeah, the other one didn't need lights, so it was 7.7. So in addition to having extra 2 seconds with one with the mirror and... Um, yeah, in addition to that, she also gets 2x attack and recovery for light attributes. The extra attack puts her in a decent place. Times 14 isn't weak. It's moderate, it's a mod end game wise, it's a moderately high multiplier. Um, but considering that you get a pretty, a really strong shield, like 75% shield is like you kind of have. Imagine the HP of Narukami Yu and um, Braska. Like you just get, if whenever you match the hard cross, you effectively get that kind of multiplier times four of your effective HP, which is a lot. Um, so considering she gets that. It's a decently high multiplier. She is a slightly stall based leader, or she was before. She should be able to kill burst through stuff now. Um, and I think the recovery will help her heal to full more often. It's not like she has a lot of HP anyways. So like if you ran the recovery badge or something, you probably wouldn't have had that much trouble healing to full anyways, depending on your team. But now you're guaranteed to like heal to full like with your with your hard cross. Like there's no, no question you'll be healing most of your HP back, if, even if you're really low, you'll have most of your HP left. If you heal, even without the heart cross, but, you know, but the five hearts makes it. A blob of five hearts gives you more recovery than just the three match. So basically she gains some attack and recovery, which is nice. Um, team wise, her team options these days, um, if you have light ideal, that would work. Except you, prob you probably won't get five hearts all the time from light ideal active. Um, if you you can always go you can go the double seven route if you want to like Tachibana you can go run with Tachibana Cotton Cotton would work really well in here I might run Light Cotton because Light Cotton makes her colors really beautifully but I'll probably run Light Cotton um, other double sevens that would work or Tachibana you could technically use Amatsu and in fact I think Amatsu is a recommended sub for her HP wise um, if you're going the double seven route, you can just match blue and he'll still do a lot of damage. I think he's a recommended sub on game eight. Um, what else works? Yusuke would work, except his active removes hearts. Um, in terms of stuff you could put on her team, again, you can use stuff like Kana's, Paimon's. You could go Rose base with like, I don't know, Sun Wukong, Tifa. Um, New Year's Tsukuyomi, I think, has double seven, so that would work. Um, a lot of things will work here. Light has a really good sub pool, so this is nice for Mir. 
Um, especially in the board change department, there's like so many things that make light and heart, like the apocalypse that a lot of us will be getting from the tournament as a reward, Saria, a pretty common um, five-star GF is a tricolor with hearts, Yogg. A lot of stuff that works in a Yogg team will work on a Mir team. Yogg himself, his actor will work really well. Um, what else? You cannot think of it right now. Yeah, just all the good light subs will probably work for her. As long as they, especially if they can make hearts and lights in their actives. Again, the Paimons work well. A lot of things work well for me. So, she should be very useful. And she's farmable, completely farmable. Excuse me, how old is this water? I have no idea. Anyways, again, with your Super Awakening, I would probably go for the TPA personally. Follow up attack. I already have Light, Khan, and Amatsu, and they'll work just fine for me. Um, but that is my review of Reish and of Mir. Um, I was going to say, let me know if you're going to roll in this God Fest, but don't roll in it. And I was going to say, let me know if you're excited about either of these two, but obviously, who would not be excited about Reish and Mir? <laughs> Reish is in one of the, uh, is a S rank leader, extremely powerful, um, very. Uh, almost as good as Yusuke and Ed, probably. It's really good. And Mir is everyone's waifu, although... You know, that's a good question. Let me know if Mir is still your waifu, even though she became a child. Um, <laughs> that's gonna be the question of this video, I guess. Oh, you can just... There's a little favor just sitting right here. I use that as Kleenex, by the way. Because um, I don't have any tissues in the room. Um, anyways, uh, this is gonna be this video. I'm going to take a shower and go to sleep, because it is a good time in the night to do both of those things. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.